This video is for anybody who is frustrated because they have taken a practice test and they find themselves missing things they thought they knew or that they know they know, um, kind of feeling like they've done the content and it's just not translating to the test, like they've done the reviews, they've looked over everything but it's not showing up. Or even if you feel like I know this material so well, I'm a month out from my test, but my score is just not reflecting where I should be. So what top scorers know about this is they know that the MCAT is not just about content, but it's also not just about strategy or even a combination of content and strategy. What the MCAT actually is, in addition to content and strategy, is that it's a test on both your physical and mental stamina. So even though you think you're just sitting there, it's not just sitting there. I mean, it is really testing your stamina the same way an endurance sport does. So if you feel like you've done the content review, you understand the strategies, but your score on practice tests is just not reflecting it, it probably means that, that there's an issue with your stamina. And I mean, think about it, this kind of makes sense. If you um, have ever sat for an exam this long, then you know that's a different story. But most people, if you think about it, have never taken a test this long. I know when I took the MCAT, maybe the longest test I had ever sat for was the dental admissions test, which was four hours. And prior to that, the longest test I had been in was a three hour final where I maybe left like two or three hours in. So if you are in the same boat, you probably are realizing that there could be a problem with your stamina. And this same thing kind of happens um, with just like studying too. If you think about it, when you study, how do you study? Well, you're probably studying in little chunks. So maybe like one or two hours here, two or three hours even there. But do you ever really study in like full on seven hour blocks with only 40 or 50 minutes in breaks, like a 30 minute lunch break and two 10 minute breaks? I mean, probably not because honestly, why would you? It sounds pretty miserable. But all of that ties into, do you have the stamina to take this exam, which is seven and a half hours long? And if you're not used to sitting there having to use your brain the entire time of the test, it's really hard to just show up on test day and sit there for seven hours and think critically the entire time and be able to answer questions and recall knowledge. It's just very difficult. So if you're wondering if stamina is the culprit, one way you can look at it is if you're somebody who has done really well on all of your prereq courses, so like bio, physics, organic, gen chem, and then your test scores are just not reflecting that, or alternatively, you've done like a heavy content review and again, your test scores are just not reflecting that, probably a stamina problem and so it's something to be aware of and you may be thinking okay but I'm taking the practice test I'm getting through them but getting through the test and being on your a game and like top of your game being able to do really well are two different things and so that's really important to kind of recognize and you could have already been taking the test and realizing like hey at this point I'm getting really tired or by that psych so so section I know it it's not that hard but I'm just so tired I can't focus and if you have any of those problems again it comes down to stamina so what does this mean this means that you basically need to be able to get to the point where your stamina is not only not holding you back but is actually an asset to you and that you're able to think through all four sections on that test over the seven and a half hours um, and think clearly and have clarity and be able to use the knowledge that you've gained, be it content or strategy, to answer questions. So to help you kind of develop this stamina, we're going to go over two strategies in this video that you can use to get the stamina you need to get through test day and do really well on the MCAT. So the first strategy on how to approach the MCAT stamina game. The first thing is treat it like it's a marathon. And I really, or an endurance sport even, I really kind of took this mindset when I was uh, training for the MCAT or practicing for it. It wasn't just about like practice problems and kind of content. It was also about making sure I could sit through that exam. And so you really have to take this approach when you're going through the test and you have to look at it like I would not just show up and run a marathon if I have never run a marathon before or even if I've run a marathon like two years ago, I wouldn't just show up and assume I can still run a marathon. I would want to practice, I'd be on a training program, diet program, like all of these other things that we don't really think about when we think about taking a test but are really necessary to build stamina for the MCAT. So that means what is the equivalent of practice marathons or running those 26 6.2 miles for you and the MCAT. Well, that is actually practice tests. And this does not just mean taking practice tests and like breaking them up into a couple days or taking them, but like taking lots of breaks and maybe being on your phone. It means taking practice tests and test like conditions. And this means if you can down to showing up to the library and sitting at a desktop computer with a mouse. I mean, you want to be as close to test day as possible. This also means taking only the breaks that you're given on the test. So don't just take an hour lunch break because you're hungry and tired and you feel like you need it. 
you have to do what the test would do so that when you get to the test, it is just another test. Just like if you had run a bunch of practice marathons or that same distance, you would get to the marathon, it would be just another run. And that's how you wanna do your practice test. So the place you should start for this is you wanna go ahead and take a full length practice test in testing conditions. And you wanna kinda of take note of how you're feeling, even write it down if you need to. So you can see where you're kind of starting to peter out or get tired, where the concentration or the stamina is a big issue for a lot of people. It's once you hit cars before that 30 minute break and then the psych -so section. Um, or even if it's something like coming back from the 30 minute break, you're having trouble with bio biochem. These are all things you need to take note of. So then you can work from there to build strategy and improve on it. And you also want to kind of pay attention to, I guess, one thing I found was like what I was eating. I would even get down to what I was eating during the breaks because I realized like if I drink too much coffee, I would end up needing to go to the bathroom and that wouldn't work because I would need to use it on my breaks. And so then I ended up switching to tea so that I was still getting some caffeine and because I did not want to go through like caffeine withdrawals on my test day, but I was maybe not having to like get up and take breaks as often. Instead, I could stick to the breaks that I was allotted. And so little things like this, another example is I realized I got really tired in Psych and Soch. So I would eat like half a chocolate bar before that section because by then you're almost done. You can have the sugar rush and then you're good to go. All of these little things are things you want to be looking for and so what works for me might not work for you but the point is you can try out and test different things to see how can you get through this test the same way people who are running a marathon are very strategic with what they're eating so now you've gone through your first practice test you've tried out uh, maybe where to eat different foods to give you enough energy see if that helps you and now our second tip is going to be how do you strategically go through the practice test to see where you could be having a stand in a problem and you might not know it because on one hand sometimes it's pretty easy to be like yeah I'm burned out I can't stay focused on the other hand you may feel like you're doing fine but then when you go back and review your test you miss like a whole section of problems so this is where you kind of want to use the strategy we're about to talk about to help you figure out other areas that may not be as obvious but where stamina could be playing a role the strategy here that you're going to use is you need to break up your practice exams into hours so that way you can see at exactly which hour were you missing the most problems. For instance, say you break it up into hours and you see that the first hour or even the second, first and second hour, you're missing a lot of problems. What does this mean? So now that probably means that you're struggling to like get in the zone. And if you're taking practice tests realistically, that also means you should be up pretty early to start your practice test. And so maybe you're not a morning person. Also, you, you need to like build the ability to kind of wake up to get going to start. And so what that tells you is, okay, when I take my practice test, I'm clearly not like in the zone or focused, all of that, that type of thing. So that means I need to do this ahead of my test so that when I sit down for that test, I am now in the zone and ready to go. So maybe how can you get in the zone if you're not a morning person or you just take a little time to warm up before a test? Well, some people will like reread through their notes or do some flashcards, not even to try and cram more information in their head, but just to make their mind start working and to realize like, okay, we're getting into that practice mindset. Alternatively, you could be somebody who loses focus somewhere between like hours four and hour seven. Um, and this kind of means if it's, or even like three and six, like kind of the middle chunk of the test though. That probably means that you're just not having clarity or you're losing focus. And so what you kind of want to do there is figure out, well, what is it? And everybody has different answers, but if you're looking for some like ideas, it could be coming back from the break, you have trouble getting back into your zone. It could be you're eating something really carb heavy, heavy during the lunch break. And so then when you start bio bio, you're tired. Um, anything like this, you need to pay attention to. So take note of where do I get tired? What was I doing? What was I eating? It could just be a matter of not being focused and having to recenter yourself. And there are some great breathing techniques for that. Um, a popular one is the 478 technique by Dr. Andrew Weil. But look up some things like that if you notice you're losing focus in the middle of the test. And then of course, there are people like myself and probably 90% of test takers who lose focus at the end of the test. Now, like I said, 90% of people roughly will have problems with the end of the test. So if you recognize this, you can use this as a point of leverage. And what you can realize is if you can stay focused during that last part of the test, you can actually have a leg up on a lot of 
the te other test takers because everybody else is burned out but you now know okay this is what i need to do to stay focused like i said earlier for me it was eating the half a chocolate bar before kind of gave me enough energy to get through and what happens is you'll start to notice that there are several like easier questions towards the end but if you're tired and burned out you're not going to be able to get them but if you're focused and have clarity of mind all of a sudden you're getting these easy points that other people are just too burned out and too tired to realize are there and are just sitting there for you to kind of grab them and add up more points so it's important to remember that the top test takers who are taking tests on your same test date they're not going to be the people who maybe studied the longest or even studied the hardest instead it's going to be the people who studied the most strategic way and we have started to recognize this so what we've done is created an entire MCAT strategy course to help you learn how to leverage different aspects of the course in the most strategic way so that you can also be one of those top scorers who studied strategically and remember it's always um, work smarter not harder and so you want to make sure that you are the strategic person not the person who is studying 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 but then still burns out and that's what we found a lot of other MCAT prep companies are focused on. They're focused on the study hard, but not the study smart. So if you're looking for a course that specifically focuses on strategy, how to approach this test strategically, and how to leverage different strengths and even weaknesses to succeed on this test, our course is for you. But the kind of key advice here is that this strategy and this str these strategic ideas, they're only as good as how you apply them. And so if you don't take action and don't learn these strategies and learn how to apply them correctly, then they're not going to do you any good. If you take action on these top score strategies we have for you and learn how to implement them, then you also will be able to achieve a top MCAT score.